Hello everyone. We are in this session. We discussed about some important points regarding the uh, self-excited generator. In that, we already discussed about the first point, residual magnetism, and the second point is field flashing. So, what is the field flashing? Whenever, whenever the residual magnetism will become zero, that time we will give small DC excitation to the winding then the residual magnetism will be recovered that is called field flashing okay in that the next point we discussed about critical field resistance and next we will entering into the critical speed so about this critical speed we already have some some already we discussed about the critical speed that is it is the speed of the generator below which it fails to build up its voltage okay without any external resistance in the field circuit only winding resistance rsh is available the speed must be more than the critical speed so always this is the speed if the generator having the speed the speed is more than the critical speed at this condition the generator emf will become zero that means generator will fail to develop the voltage the speed is called the critical speed because why it is high why it should be high means so generally the generator emf formula is eg equal p phi nz by 60 a so in this p is the constant and z is the constant 60 is the constant and phi is the constant and complete generated emf is flux and the speed here so it is varied then eg is varied but depends on the speed also but the speed is must be the critical speed more than the critical speed if the speed is low generated emf will become low by varying the field current okay so this is about the critical speed next critical load resistance we already is already discussed about whenever the load resistance is given to that so here is the resistance of the load resistance of the load below which generator fails to build up of its voltage because if the load resistance is less than critical resistance the equivalent resistance of the the equivalent resistance of the load and field very less that the armature is more than the residual flux so for example just to in order to analyze this just look at here we have the armature just i am taking example we have the armature and we have a shunt generator a shunt field here we have the shunt field available this is the shunt field so this is the shunt field yeah this shunt field we have armature armature terminals and we are connecting a load resistance so just take it as rl this is the load resistance generally generally this is the self excited generator you know that so here the what is the concept is here is the resistance of the load below which generator fails to build up of its voltage so this is the important thing that is critical load resistance is the resistance if the resistance is in the taken resistance below load resistance for example assume we have some load resistance that load resistance is less than critical field resistance then automatically it is failed to generate that means the generated emf will become zero will become zero how how it is possible that is the thing just just observe here because if the load resistance is less than rlc the equivalence of circuit of the load and field is very less assume for example this is the 100 ohms for example this is the 1 ohm this is the 1 ohm then what happen simply the thing is 
here here so what is the parallel thing here 100 ohm 100 ohm is parallel with 1 ohm so 100 parallel with 1 what happened 100 into 1 by 100 plus 1 then it become only 100 by 101 then it become approximately 1 ohm only approximately it is 1 ohm and 1 ohm means what ought to happen so it will become the complete the equivalent resistance for both shunt and the load will become 1 ohm because both are parallelly connected then the armature current is more at the residual magnetism so if you draw the equivalent diagram for this combination this is the just take it as the equivalent resistance that will become the 1 ohm so just observe here the generated emf we have the eg for example for residual magnetism it generates the 20 volts plus and minus it is 1 ohm what is the armature current now so armature current 20 by 1 then the armature current is 20 amps that means it is a very very high current the armature current is residual voltage okay that the armature current is demagnetize the residual magnetism so due to this high armature current whenever the we have a very important thing armature current is very high we have a one problem when we are using the very high armature current that time what happened the residual magnetism the residual flux will become the zero how it will demagnetize the residual flux the reason is demagnetize the residual flux demagnetize the residual magnetism residual magnetism yes okay here only so thereby no further build up of the voltage then automatically whenever it is demagnetizing means the generated emf again further there is no further voltage that means the voltage will be fixed 20 volts but what is our requirement voltage if it is a single phase approximately we require 200 volts so this is the problem okay yeah so with the generator build up under the load condition the load resistance must be more than the critical load resistance okay so already we discussed about this topic but in the topic we have some correction there there we are we are analyzing different way but here the correct way that is always critical load resistance the load resistance always more than the critical load resistance otherwise generated emf is zero because the effect of the demagnetizing the reason is demagnetization effect why demagnetization effect the more current of the armature and automatically armature will develop the current due to the flux will be enters okay so this is about the importance of the critical load resistance okay so these are the very very important points regarding the self excitation of the dc generator okay next we will discuss one problem regarding this topic here the problem is a dc shunt generator has critical resistance of 200 ohms yet 800 rpm so here the critical resistance rc1 a centigen critical resistance is 200 ohms at, at the, the speed is n1 is 800 rpm okay if the speed is increases to 1000 rpm so here the speed will be increases to 1000 rpm okay then its critical resistance would be what would be the critical resistance this is the question this is the question so in order to understand this question so when the speed is increases what about the critical speed so for that just a take 
just a OCC curve just take the OCC curve so in that curve just vary the field current with respect to the EMF so you have to draw the graph between the generated EMF as well as the field current for example the speed is less speed we have only some speed we have only some speed the speed is like this the speed is it rotates with the 800 rpm okay next another is there we are taking the increasing the speed the speed is like this the speed value is the 1000 rpm okay then how can we find out the critical for the two cases how can we find out the critical speed uh, sorry. critical resistance the critical resistance is the tangent of the these two curves the tangent is this is the rc1 and this is the tangent of the second thing that is the rc2 so here this you observe here um, for rc1 for low speed the resistance value will be the like this for high speed the resistance value in the like this so if you observe here the critical speed if you observe here the resistance critical not critical resistance the critical resistance for 1000 rpm the critical resistance value will be high so just take it a one point just take it do the calculation so if you are doing the calculation and same field current it is the e2 this is the e1 if you find out e2 value e2 value is rc2 by if and if you find the e1 value that is the e e1 sorry 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 so if you find the different case first you find the uh, rc2 how can we find out the rc2 that is e2 by if1 okay if how can we find out the rc1 that is e1 by if so then finding that both the cases e2 is high then automatically rc2 is there so finally how can we define this this we can write rc2 we can give small clarification that is critical speed is always proportional to the speed critical resistance always proportional to the speed so by using that we can find out rc2 by rc1 equal to n2 by n1 what is rc2 we need to find out the rc2 what is rc1 rc1 is the 200 and what is n2 n2 is the 1000 what is n1 n1 is the 800 okay 200 4 times 4 250 times then we can find out the rc2 is the 250 ohms 250 ohms okay so this is about the uh, remaining important points and the problem i hope all of you understand the session thank you